Assalamu alaikum everyone. I hope you all are doing well by the blessings of the Almighty Allah. Today's video is one of the most requested video. So it's about what to take with you inside your luggage for Umrah. That means it's a packing vlog. What to take, what to pack for Umrah, the important things. And the important point to be noted that this video is going to be a girly version of packing vlog. But if you are a male subscriber, I am going to share some experience of mine which gonna help you to have a mindset before going to Umrah if you are a male subscriber. So if you are among someone who is going for Umrah within a few days, then I hope this video is going to help you a lot. And I also hope that this sort of videos are going to be my Satka Zaria, a good source of Satka Zaria for me. So without having further ado, let's get started. Let's first talk about the abayas and hijabs. I have taken 5 abayas here, but if you take 4, that's enough. If I'm not wrong, then most of the country produces abayas with this sort of clothings. That means this sort of materials, which never take that much space in your luggage. So if you take 2, sometimes people prefer less amount of clothing then you can take two but i prefer three to four because sometimes you do not have that much time to wash your abayas if you take four then you have options if one is you are not sure about the cleanliness then you can take another one and it's ready to go now let's move into another point regarding abaya which is going to be a point of young generation that is if you want to plan to shoot something or if you want to take photos different abaya gonna add different colors and obviously it gonna add variation to your thing right for me being a part of this generation i personally believe it's okay different generation have different speciality if another person who belongs to the same place and he or she is planning to go to Darjeeling, maybe London, maybe some another place and seeing you, your pictures, your videos, he or she is inspired to go to Umrah. What's wrong with that? This video, this photo can work as a Satkai Zarya for you. So it's okay. It's gonna take less amount of space in your luggage. Take four abayas or you can take five like mine. It's okay. But I also would like to add that there should be a thin barrier. There is a thin barrier. What is that barrier? That is when you taking photos and videos and you are busy with that during your Umrah. That means when you are doing tawaf, you taking video. That gonna distract your ibadah, your duas and your prayers and you, that will break your concentration. So I highly prefer that stop doing all these things during Umrah journey. Now let's talk about the abayas again, getting back to the point. You need to take the abayas and obviously what you gonna wear with it. That means your hijabs. Every particular abaya has every particular hijab. If you want to take one hijab for two to three abayas, that gonna add space to your luggage. That's great. But you need to organize them and put it into the luggage, of course. And another thing is, if you are taking something white, like me, then remember that white sometimes not be able to cover everything which you are wearing underneath. That means your salwar, your kameez, that gonna show up. So it's better to wear white salwar and kameez and other stuffs, even the headband that means the under cap hijab cap that sh should also be white 
only then the white gonna cover everything so if you are taking something which is white you need to be very careful give a trial before taking any white if that material is enough to cover everything that's great but if not then you need to wear everything that is white before wearing a white abaya Now let's talk about the regular wearings. I preferred two pieces rather than three pieces because I have the sets of hijab with my abaya so I do not need extra hijabs with the two pieces. And you can take two to three sets which you can wash and wear again and again. If you are taking two pieces of winter then do not take more than three sets from summer. That means you need to keep in touch with the weather update from Makkah and Medina. I have seen two to three videos recently before going to Umrah and I noted that there is a cold weather in Medina of course and also in Makkah as well. People are wearing shawls and sweaters so I decided to take some warm clothes with me. After reaching Makkah, I have found the rainy weather, alhamdulillah, that's great to enjoy, but there is not that much cold. But in Medina, it's really very normal for Medina to have cold at night. And it will be a hassle for you when you purchase a lot of things from there and you need to adjust all those things in your luggage. It will be a great hassle for you to manage the space inside your luggage. Now let's talk about the footwears. You need to take the comfortable one because we need to walk a lot. If it is Umrah, if it is the main Hajj, doesn't matter. You need to take the comfortable footwears because we need to walk a lot. So if you are comfortable with chapels, take chapels. If you are comfortable walking in shoes, then take shoes. It's your choice. But you need to keep in mind that there is a hot weather in Makkah most of the time. So sometimes there is a sweating problem for some people. So if you sweat, then avoid shoe. If you are comfortable with chapels, it's better to take chapels like this. So you need to take some important things inside your bag. Let's talk about that. A thin prayer mat is one. Another thing is the copy of your visa, passport and so on. Number three is your tasbih and your mud of tamum. So if you need to do the tamum, then you need to carry a clean mitti or mud with you so that you can do tamum if need. And then you can add some extra things inside your bag according to your need. For example, some food, a small water bottle and a bag where you can put the shoe so that you cannot lose the shoe inside the masjid and so on. Okay, now let's move into the cosmetics section. So if you are doing the Umrah and you are in your Ihram, then you are strictly avoided to use any sort of things that means shampoo or soap which contains smell. So if you can purchase this sort of things without smell from your country then do purchase. If you are not then you cannot use this sort of things at least the day before. Organize this sort of things according to your comfort zone. If you are comfortable with mini shampoos and soaps, then purchase this sort of things. If you are comfortable in bottles, then carry an empty bottle and fulfill uh, that thing with shampoo or liquid soap and then 
carry that bottle with you it's completely your choice the reason why i am suggesting you to carry the bottles because you need to also add the dishwash soap it can be the liquid version or the hard version that means the bar one so you need to use them to clean your plates if you are having the food your plan is to have the food from the restaurants then that's okay they're gonna provide you the plates but like us if you are among those people where the food comes from the kafila and the food quality is really great and alhamdulillah there will be no any food issue we all know that then you need to carry the plates as it is really very comfortable to have food in plates rather than having them in one time boxes so try to take minimal things which you cannot do without for example the toothpaste the toothbrush etc well it's a journey of 15 to 16 days or more so if you take minimal amount still it's gonna be a bunch of products so try to take at least one body lotion or body butter which gonna help you to protect your skin from the hot wind the effect of hot wind and also from the cold so your skin gonna have benefits from both of the sides and another thing is the pin that means the safety pin and also the hijab pins both we uh, need to wear hijab everywhere so pins are needed and if you are not comfortable with pins then you can carry the ready hijabs that's also great and another thing is the powder if you have a small mini bottle like this then you can carry mini bottle of powder you can carry cottons and cotton buds because when you have the pain in your leg in your hand and you need to apply medicine or maybe some skin product then you need the cottons if you need that if you have this sort of products then carry cottons with you similarly you need to take other important stuffs which related to your health for example masks and medicines if you have fever if you catch cold then cough syrups and uh, you know basic medicines which you need if you have headache etc and you also need to take the money that means the reels and also you need to take the hijab caps and other essentials with you So I hope that this video is going to be an informative one for you. Do not think much. It has been said that in Namal Amalu bin Niyat, that means if you have Niyat, if you decided and set your mind, then Allah will find a way for you. So it's Allah's responsibility. You just have your clear Niyat and that's it. Do not worry. Do not worry about money, about your health condition, about your surroundings. If you have responsibility to take someone else with you, for example, your daughter, your wife, do not think much. If you want to take your daughter with you, if you want to take your son with you, if you want to take your life partner with you for Umrah, then you have the niyat of both in your mind and do sadaka keep praying i repeat do sadaka it can be small amount of rice for birds it can be water it can be money for the poor anything but have a clear niyat continuous praying and do sadaka keep doing sadaka it will increase the amount of your earning and give baraka in your earning and inshallah one day allah will fulfill your dream and with that note saying inshallah for you 
me yasmin signing off today hit like subscribe and keep praying for me assalamu alaikum